Hey there, comic book fans. I'm actually back from the comic shop today. For the first time since March 25th, I have new comics. Um, and going, I think that this is the... It was also the furthest I've been from the house since March 25th. Last time I got new comics, I was driving on my my local highway, the Palisades, and I was like, wow, I haven't been on this road since the end of March. It was quite weird thinking that. Uh, but, got four comics and a book. Always fun. Looks like we got Birthright. Some nice blues and reds and yellows in there. What was happening in Birthright last I knew? There was a big war going on between the other dimension, which lore, the lord of the other dimension. I forget what it is. Theranos and Earth. So there's a big battle going on between monsters and the military. And the military is losing. So they're trying to figure out some, uh, some magical way to get things done. Um, I've enjoyed Birthright's coming to it. I think this is another one that's coming to an end at 48. A lot of them come to end at 48 because they're in 12s. And speaking of coming to an end, at which I also, I think, at 48, is issue 45 of Outcast. Paul Azaceta, Robert Kirkman. It's been a fun story about humans being possessed. Some dark and moody Paul Azaceta artwork. And, once again, I can't remember the last thing that happened in this, besides um, the big kind of war is happening. Well, it's not quite a war. Not like uh, Birthright is a war. It's more like a battle in a town between these demon, demons in quotes. They're some sort of foreign alien or something. Possessed people and people of Earth and the outcasts who somehow have the power to cast out. These demons, and I think one of the major demons just switched sides or something last I knew. I can't remember. Uh, but something like that. Uh, hey, I remember enough of it. Um, that's right, that, 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 that guy at the end, the ten, I don't know, ten issues or so ago, the, the new boss demon came. And they look like people, they don't look like demons. And to, to straighten out some of the stuff that's been happening for the big transformation that was going on. And I think he... Then in the last few issues, his boss even came up, came by, and now he was betraying his other demons for some reason. I can't remember what. And then we've got the goon number ten. I wonder if uh, Eric Powell is doing. I think the last issue he wasn't even doing. No, he's not. It makes me wonder why I'm even buying the goon. I mean, I did like the last issue, but. Roger Landridge and Mike Norton. It's, it, but, you know, I was buying Eric Powell's goon, not Mike Landridge and Ed, Eric Norton's goon. So it's kind of like, well, well, Mike Norton's goon. But it's not bad. I enjoyed the issue The issue they did it before, before this. They did a... But it makes me wonder, you know, why am I getting the goon without Eric Powell? It, uh, it's a little iffy to me. It would be like buying the Savage Dragon without Eric Larson. Why would we want to do that? As he's at issue 248. There's his back cover. Don't know who drew that, but I'm not Eric Larson. It's time we put an end to you, Malcolm Dragon. Once and for all, the Gathering Storm. Uh, 250 is coming up. It's going to be a big size $10 issue. Uh, I think there's a whole bunch of alternate covers. I saw Walt Simonson did one. Frank Cho did one. I think Rob Liefeld did one. There's a bunch of different alternate covers. Ooh, look at that double pager, huh? I don't know what's going on, but there's a big fight. Um, um, two for, yeah, I'm only getting whatever one I get on my pull list. Uh, Eric Larson. Two, the, probably the main cover two, uh, for issue 250. I, I I wonder who's going to be... Is there going to be anyone collecting all those alternate covers for Eric Larson? I'm not sure. Uh, because I don't collect alternate covers to begin with. But uh, Then, the last thing we got is a book. Famous first editions. More fun comics. Or new fun comics. The big comic magazine. This was the first comic 
that DC Comics ever printed. Uh, and I think it's never been reprinted before. And this is in black and white, too. It's never been, I think it's, they, it's never been reprinted before because there's like a syndicated strip in it. And they could never clear the rights or something. Oh, there's some some dots. Ooh. Um, the start of something big. An intro by Jerry Bales. And we got, I think we have a second introduction. This one by, it even says second introduction. This one by Roy Thomas. Uh, Roy Thomas. Then we got a new fun. This printed letter from editor Lloyd Jacket was inserted into some advanced copies of New Comics. So I guess some people got that hand-written letter. New Fun, the big comic magazine. Ten, I got this mostly for its historical value. I'm sure, it's not the greatest comic in the world, but I like stuff like this. I like historical stuff. I'll have to do a video looking at this. I don't think I don't, don't think I put out a video looking at anything. Some nice. Uh, looks like this was a lot of uh, Sunday strip stuff. Barry O'Neill. Oh yeah, definitely. This this was the first comic. It was before all sorts of new stuff. Before they had the idea of making new comics, so everything looks like a Sunday strip. Or you can make how to build a model of. Henry Henrik Hudson's Half Moon. Ooh, we can build models. Cool. Use these full-scale drawings to make historical miniatures. Ooh. Oh, there's all sorts of articles and stuff in here, too. Cool. Stamp, stamps and coins, popular science, young homemakers, after school, there's another strip. This looks like it's all sort of Sunday strips. Interesting. I did not know that. But... First time it's been re reprinted. Look at it. That looks like an, uh, they scanned that from a copy of the comic there. A tabloid tradition continues. Another uh, editorial. Of, oh, I guess this is about... Uh, because they put these out in the 70s. Uh, they were like Marvel Treasury editions, except they were famous first editions. They'd like... Action Comics number one, Detective Twenty Seven, stuff like that. They weren't hardcover; they were soft cover. I, I never had any of those, so this is the first famous first edition uh, I've gotten. And since I showed you my cycling shorts, just in today's mail, I'm my cycling pants. I got cycling shorts, but. I've never had official cycling shorts uh, in a long, long time. These, these, these aren't like the skin-tight cycling shorts of my youth. These are like cargo pants cycling shorts. I don't know what's up with that, but uh, I'll have to try them out. Make sure they fit the, the shirt. I got a bright orange shirt with my black shorts to go with. So got that so all set up for my cycling. Now, so I already showed you in my... No new comic book haul video. So my new work, I'll dug out some of my old work. These are from August 8, 1916 and 8, 1816. So I guess I did, the, at least I colored them on alternate days. This is a Dreams of Things 14, one of the earlier ones. That's an interesting, much uh, less complex design I was using on that. I was just kind of using the figure as a design. Interesting, strange background too. And here, once again, using the figure's costume as the design. No background to speak of on this one, but plenty of foreground. So I was using my side of the brush technique on this one to get that ragged line. Boy staring intently, isn't he? Wow, well, they, and I have, I probably haven't looked at these in years. It's funny. I, I want every now and then I like to pull things out and older things out and look at them, which I haven't done with these in a while. But one of these, I, I'm I'm closing in on having done a hundred of these, so I'm going to get them all together in one spot and look at them. But uh, these ones are interesting. I mean, they're they're the composition is much simpler than the ones I'm working on right now with just one figure in each one. So uh, I find that interesting looking back. But anyway. New comics, good stuff. You guys all have a good week out there.